the previous lecture we saw how the thermal vibrations of the crystal lattice gave rise to lattice waves, lattice vibrations which set into motion the acoustic or elastic waves whose quantized excitations are known as phonons. And we saw how the classical theory of specific heats by Dulong and Petit which did not take into account anything except the bare idea of the equipartition theorem due to Boltzmann uh, which determined the kinetic the internal energy of the solid considered as an assembly of 3 n atoms and uh, how this led to a specific heat which is 3 r per mole. a constant specific heat which does not change with temperature and this is not in accordance with experimental observations because the experimentally the specific heat of a typical solid goes as from 3 r from the value 3 r at high temperatures it descends down like this. So, while the Dulong Petit theory correctly predicts and accounts for the molar specific heat reaching this constant value of 3 r, it did not give was not able to explain why there is a decrease at lower temperatures. And this was the experimental fact namely a reduction of the specific heat at low temperatures till the specific heat vanishes at absolute 0. This is the experimental observation which was successfully explained by Einstein by assuming making the rather artificial assumption that all the 3 n atoms we are mind you we are talking about something like 10 to the power 24 atoms trillions and quadrillions of atoms all vibrating in unison at, a, at one characteristic frequency that is something like an artificial assumption which uh, is not likely to be borne out cannot be substantiated by theory also. So, but still as a first step he made this assumption that all these 3 n atoms all these vibrate harmonically simple harmonically at one given frequency and assuming this he this frequency was taken by him to be given or given uh, the corresponding energy associated with this mode of this frequency was taken by him to be given by the quantum theory as n plus of h nu for a harmonic oscillator. Where n is an integer and nu is the frequency of the oscillator which is assumed to be the same for all the oscillators and h is the Planck's constant. We saw that based on this assumption calculating the average energy of an assembly of such oscillators he could arrive at the total internal energy 
as a sum to infinity of a progression and this gave rise to a specific heat which goes at high temperatures to the Dulong Petit value of 3 R at sufficiently high temperatures and which is also predicts qualitatively not quantitatively a qualitative decrease as at low temperatures till it reaches 0 at absolute 0. The qualitative variation was accounted for in terms of a theoretical dependence an experimental uh, exponential decrease at low temperatures. This was low temperatures, but such an experiment exponential variation was not observed by experiments. There were considerable deviations from this exponential curve predicted by the Einstein theory. So, this uh, this is I, we have already pointed out one shortcoming of the Einstein theory namely that all the oscillators vibrate at the same frequency which is a rather drastic simplification. So, this is the point which was ad addressed by the Debye theory of specific heat. So, we are going to discuss the Debye theory of specific heat today. It is an improvement over the Einstein theory and in this we assume a range of frequency of the phonons and how is this range determined? We assume that uh, within a given frequency range we have the phonons which, which are described by the number of phonons in this range are described again by a density of states function d of mu d nu. This is the density of states of phonons. This is very similar to what we discussed in the case of the electrons in the solid the conduction electrons. So, this is the density of states in the frequency range nu to nu plus d nu in a very small interval. Now, the Debye assumed that the actual solid is a continuum is a continuous medium. In other words he assumed the solid to be a continuum which means that he ignored the discrete structure. due to the atoms in the lattice, this discrete structure is ignored. So, this is again in turn a shortcoming of the Debye theory which we will come to later. So, the solid is regarded as one continuous medium ignoring the discrete structure of the crystal lattice. Ignoring this, we can consider stationary waves, elastic waves, which are set up in a cubic solid of volume V equal to L cube. Considering a cubic solid whose volume V is L cube, that means that the cube has a side L. Let us to start with that, consider a simple one dimensional system in which we will write the phonon waves, the acoustic waves, the spatial part as exponential i q x, where q is the phonon wave vector and the periodic bound periodicity requires that this should be equal to exponential i q x plus l, where l is the size of the length of the one dimensional solid say in the x direction. So, this immediately imposes a condition on the wave vector the possible values of q can only be 0 plus minus 
pi plus minus 2 pi plus minus 4 pi etcetera by L. The argument must become 2 pi 4 pi etcetera. So, these are the allowed values in one dimensional space and there is one allowed value for a distance 2 pi by L. That means, the number of vibrational modes per unit length in Q space which is known as the density of modes is the reciprocal of this which is density of modes in one dimension. is just the reciprocal of this reciprocal of 2 pi by L which is L by 2 pi and the density of states in three dimensions in a for a three dimensional solid will be L by 2 pi cube. This is in this is the number of modes per unit dimension in a cubic solid in three dimensions. So, the number of modes in the wave vector range q to q plus d q this is per unit length in q vector space. Now, we want to calculate the number of modes in the frequency interval nu to nu plus d nu which corresponds to a wave vector interval from q to q plus d q. So, this will be given by this is what will be given by d of q d q and that will be L by 2 pi whole cube into 4 pi q square d q. So, this will be where L cube is v the volume. So, v by 8 pi cube and 4 pi. So, this will be 2 pi square q square d q. Therefore, we can find the corresponding density of states function in omega space or nu space in frequency space. So, it turns out that the in the frequency space it will just be d of omega d omega is correspondingly given by v by 2 pi square into v cube omega square d omega, where v is the speed of sound, because these are sound waves. The phonons correspond to elastic wave excitations of the elastic waves. So, this should give you the density of states. So, this is the phonon density of state. Now, we have to calculate the total number of modes in correspondingly uh, uh, accordingly we can uh, define d of nu d nu. So, we define d a b defined a cut off frequency, because the number of degrees of freedom is not infinite the number of degrees of freedom is if n is the number of atoms in the cubic solid then the number of degrees of freedom is just 3 n and this should be equal to the integral of since d of omega d omega the density of state function integrated from 0 up to a cut off frequency omega d. So, this gives me where omega is 2 pi nu. So, putting all this in we get where nu d is known as a day b cut off frequency. This means that you cannot assume that the phonons have all frequencies from 0 to infinity. 
instead the finite number of degrees of freedom imposes a cut off in the frequency spectrum given by the Debye frequency. So, only frequencies up to that are allowed and if you integrate the phonon density of states over that frequency interval, we get the total number of degrees of freedom. Using this, we can write the Debye frequency nu d. So, that gives an expression for this Debye frequency. Here, this is nu d cube, so this power becomes one third. I made a mistake. Now, we also have to remember that sound waves are not just propagating in one dimension alone. You have longitudinal sound waves and also transverse modes, if the x direction is the direction of the vibration, then the longitudinal fine sound waves propagate along the x direction, but along the y and z directions there will be transverse sound waves and the speed of sound need not be the same in all these three directions even for a cubic solid because of the anisotropy. So, we have to distinguish between the speed of sound for longitudinal waves be longitudinal and the speed of sound for transverse sound waves. There will be two sets, two sets of modes for transverse waves corresponding to one mode each longitudinal mode because there are two directions at right angles to it. So, we have to count twice as many modes in the transverse waves. Taking that into account, we can finally write this expression for the Debye cutoff frequency as nu d for a real solid with uh, which is vibrating which has transverse as well as longitudinal frequencies. This will be just 9 n as before times divided by 4 pi and we will have this whole thing raised to the power one third. That will be the correct expression for the Debye frequency and putting in the typical values of n and the speed of sound in ordinary solids, we get the Debye frequency as something like 10 to the power typically 10 to the power 12 hertz, which is in the far infrared. So, the Debye cutoff frequency lies in the for a solid for a typical solid lies in the far infrared frequency range. Modes above these are really high frequency waves which uh, are not the solid is not responding to this. Once we have this expression, we can find the internal energy as before by calculating the average energy of the phone on different modes and multiply by the density of states function and then integrate it from 0 to nu d. So, borrowing the other ideas of the average energy, the average energy we have already seen is uh, of the form h nu by e to the power h nu by k b t minus 1. So, if we take this and calculate the internal energy and differentiate it with respect to temperature, we get the Debye expression for specific heat. So, we get the average energy turns out to be or 
which we can write the, as the internal energy that is nothing but 9 n k b t by h u d times whole cube integral 0 times 0 to h nu d by k t x cube d x by e to the power x minus 1. So, this is written as x t taking x equal to h nu by k b t. There is also a another k b t factor. So, that is the inter internal energy and differentiating it we get this specific heat is d u by d q. So, if we take again we consider the high temperature limit and the low temperature limit. Since the low temperature limit is of great interest let us take that first. So, corresponding to this I can define also a temperature k b theta d equal to h nu d where theta d is known as the day b temperature. So, if the day B, the temperature is very small compared to the day B temperature, then that is the low temperature limit and in this we get U as a constant which is got easily from this, but the important thing is that the temperature dependence is t to the power 4 behavior for the internal energy and the specific heat goes as T cube. So, the Debye theory predicts a T cube dependence on the specific heat of the specific heat on the temperature and this is what is experimentally observed at sufficiently low temperatures for all solids the specific heat at constant volume goes as the T cube the cube of the absolute temperature. So, this is elevated to a law and it is usually known as the Debye T cube law. The second case of course, is the high temperature case this is one. Then we have the second case of high temperatures where T is very large compared to theta D and it is found that the specific heat goes to r as at sufficiently high temperature you get back the du long petit value. Intermediate temperature you have to numerically integrate and obtain the specific heat values. The next figure gives you the d by variation of the specific heat with temperature. In fact, many solids you find a very good correspondence between the experimental data and the theoretical calculation. However, there are deviations and we know that these are because the Debye theory needs further improvement as it assumes the solid to be a continuous medium and it ignores the discrete st atomic structure of the solid. Also, it assumes a common cutoff frequency nu d for the entire solid for both the longitudinal and transverse vibrations. So, this is when is this a good theory because when this assumption that the solid is a continuum is a correct one. This will be correct only when the discrete structure of the lattice can be ignored. That means, if the wavelength is very long only for long wavelength or low frequency modes of phonons. For high frequency modes, the wavelength becomes smaller and smaller 
and then the discrete structure of the lattice can no longer be ignored. So, because of that there will be a deviation this problem has to be rectified. Lists typical Davy temperatures given by this calculated because we have the expression for nu d which can be calculated once you know the number of atoms per unit volume and then the speed of sound in a cubic solid. So, you can calculate this theoretically and the Davy temperature calculated in this way for different materials is given in table. For example, in copper it is close to room temperature 315, whereas in diamond it is very high 1860 Kelvin. So, you can see there is considerable variation. As we already discussed in connection with the conduction electron theory, in metals we have in addition to the phonon contribution to the specific heat, there is also an electronic contribution due to the free electrons and we have as we already discussed the specific heat in a metal, a good metal is goes as A t plus B t cube the electronic contribution is proportional to T and the phonon contribution this is the electron contribution free electrons and this is due to the lattice vibrations or phonons. So, there are there are contributions to the specific heat from both and the observed the measured specific heat is a combination of these two. So, if you take the experimental value and then divide by T this gives you A plus B T square. So, if you plot C by T as a function of T square it should be a linear curve like this. So, this is actually observed and the figure shows how this is so. so the slope of this, the slope gives you the constant B which occurs in the phonon contribution and the intercept is equal to A which gives you the electronic heat capacity coefficient. So, both electronic heat capacity coefficient and the phonon contribution which involves the dB frequency can also be calculated from the observed experimental data on specific heats by making a plot of C by T versus T square for metals. So, from this slope B can be determined and hence the D by frequency or the D by temperature can be determined. Actually the values in the table which we discussed already are obtained in this way, but in order to take into account the discrete nature of the lattice structure, we have to reconsider some of these issues and consider lattice vibrations in a discrete crystal lattice of atoms. So, to start with we consider a one dimensional lattice. So, we plan to consider the lattice vibrations in some detail in order to see how the Davy theory can be further improved. So, in this again we start with a simple case of a one dimensional crystal lattice. Of n atoms. So, we have now an atom a large line of atoms on a microscopic scale and we consider an infinite to start with we consider an infinite one dimensional lattice. So, as shown in figure. So, this lattice we take to be extending 
along the x direction. So, we have the various atoms situated at regular intervals at regular spacing on this one dimensional lattice of identical atoms. Let us consider the nth atom and consider its vibration, consider it as a simple harmonic oscillator uh, to connect it with its neighbors on either side the n minus 1 atom. So, I have an atom here, an atom here and an atom here. This is like n, this is n plus 1 and this is n minus 1. So, there are these are simple harmonic oscillators which means that we can think of springs of the same spring constant. So, let the force constant be f. In which case the equation of motion of this nth atom can be written as m d square x n by d t square, where x n is the displacement from equilibrium position of the nth atom and that is given by minus f and this is the force constant, then the net displacement is x n minus x n minus 1. And similarly, for the other atom x n minus x n plus 1. So, force constant time the displacement, the net uh, extension or contraction. So, that gives the equation of motion and uh, so we now assume that these are these displacements are given by the running waves. So, a periodic solid in simple harmonic vibration. So, you get the propagation of elastic waves of the form a e to the power minus i omega t plus q n x that will be x n, where a is the amplitude. Oh, I, I should write the repeat distance. So, this is the repeat distance of this. The regular spacing is the lattice. Uh, we have similar expressions for x n minus 1 and x n plus 1, wherever n occurs you replace it with n minus 1 or n plus 1 respectively. Once you have this and substitute this in this equation of motion that we have written here. So, d square x n will simply give minus m omega square x n. So, that will give the, so we will simplifying this we will arrive at the so called dispersion relation, which relates the omega to the wave vector, the angular frequency to the wave vector and that is given by omega as root 4 f by m sin q a by 2. So, this is a kind of we can call this uh, omega maximum. So, that gives the relation between omega and q, the angular frequency and the wave vector. So, this is called the dispersion relation of these elastic waves propagating in a discrete medium. So, we have something like this and we can see that for long waves, long wavelength limit, which means that the phonon wave vector wave vector is wave number is 2 pi by lambda. So, if the wavelength is long, the q becomes smaller and smaller. So, we can take the limit q tending to 0. 
in that case we can write replace sin q a by 2 as omega goes as omega m into q a by 2 r equal to omega m a by 2 into q. So, you see omega and q these are all constants omega m is root 4 f by m where m is the mass of the atom and f is the force constant. So, and a is the lattice periodicity. So, all these are constants of the given lattice. So, you can see that omega is a linear function of the wave vector as indeed we know for sound waves. So, this is what we have assumed for the continuum model of the d by model. Whereas, for high frequencies when q is no longer 0 and q becomes sufficiently large, we have to consider the actual displacement uh, dispersion relationship of this kind. So, the figure gives you the actual variation figure 9 8 gives the frequency versus wave vector for a one dimensional lattice. In this you can see it is a periodic repeat repeating pattern the function is periodic therefore, it is enough if we consider the range of q values from minus pi by a to plus pi by a minus pi by a to plus pi by a that will be so you have something like this so this is omega m at very small values of q this is a linear function beyond that at higher q values it uh, deviates from the linearity and becomes a sinusoidal function which is a periodic function. So, we can consider it is enough if we consider the behavior within this range of q values from minus pi by a to pi by plus pi by a this zone this range of values defines the so called first Brillouin zone. So, the phonon density of states can be considered within this. We next go on to the case of a finite one dimensional lattice of identical atoms, because we know that any crystal lattice is not infinite, even though it is theoretically convenient to assume that it is infinite, but it is not infinite and so we must release this assumption and consider the finite nature of this lattice. We will do this in the next lecture.